That's the question that the widespread media coverage of the 2010 census projection that white Americans would soon be a minority triggered for Yale psychologist Jennifer Richeson. I was listening to the radio, noticed these reports about the changing demographics of the United States getting repeated. People of color accounted for 91.7% of growth. It's like the future of our country on steroids and it's happening now. And I would see it on my Twitter feed or, you know, in social media outlets, these articles about this happening. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, social psychology suggests that this type of communication and how it's constructed as majority minority, right, or this coming white minority is probably going to be threatening to lots of white people, right? Lots of, you know, people who maybe don't think of themselves in terms of their racial group membership, but this type of communication will suddenly make them think of themselves in terms of their racial group membership and in a very defensive way that's likely to lead to the expression of racial bias. And that's just where we started. Richeson and colleagues at Northwestern conducted a study that was released before the 2016 presidential election that was later nicknamed the Rise of Trump Study. First, the researchers asked nearly a 1,000 white participants what kind of government they favored. Very conservative, very liberal, or somewhere in between. Then they exposed half the participants to media coverage of the census forecast. The news that white Americans would soon make up less than half the population had been covered by every network. For the first time, minority groups now account for about half of American children under the age of five. Census Bureau figures show more minority babies now being born than non-Hispanic whites. The researchers exposed the other half of the participants to entirely different, neutral information. Then they asked both groups what kind of government they now favored, given the information they'd just been exposed to. The political views of the group that watched the neutral information didn't change. But the views of the group that watched the news clip about white people becoming a minority changed dramatically. It led to greater endorsement of politically conservative positions on a broad range of policies from drilling in the Arctic to tax policy to health care policies and of course what you'd expect policies that are most relevant to racial uh, attitudes and policies so you know immigration policy affirmative action those types of things to confirm that the shift toward conservative politics was caused by fear of the consequences of being a minority Richeson then conducted another version of the study in which participants who watched news coverage of the census were afterwards reassured about white people's future status in society. We say, you know what? Even in a future where whites are less than 50% of the population, because of, you know, any number of factors, including different access to education, to jobs, to training, whites on average will still maintain a dominant status, meaning access to resources, jobs, political influence. And so, you know, not that much is going to change, actually, in terms of how society operates in, despite the fact that the numbers are changing. When they were reassured that white people would remain dominant, the people who saw the census information no longer supported a more conservative government. It was confirmation that it was simply being made to feel that white dominance was threatened, which had caused them to change their politics. So it turns out that even in the world's oldest democracy, you can get people to change their politics simply by giving them cues that almost automatically trigger us versus them thinking. 